Hello. We are doing a group presentation on the undocumented students and immigrant deportations. My name is Alexa Pachardo. I'll be taking care of slides one through three. My name is Linda Hahn. I will be doing slides four through six. And my name is Destiny Reyes, and I will be doing slides seven through ten. So in Eileen Sullivan's article, she is a seasoned journalist with the New York Times who examines the United States government's intensified efforts to deport Haitian migrants under Title 42 in her 2022 article. Initially intended as a public health measure to prevent the spread of COVID-19, Title 42 has been controversially used to expedite expulsions without standard immigration pro proceedings, disproportionately affecting marginalized communities. Sullivan highlights the severe humanitarian consequences faced by deported migrants, migrants, including political instability, economic hardship, and violence in, in Haiti. She critiques the misuse of public health policies for immigration control and emphasizes the broader social and political implications, including the strained United States, Haiti relations, and criticism from human rights organizations. Eileen Sullivan used an essay type that she uses in her article is journalistic and analytical. The main themes are humanitarian issues, which is a ter which conclude terrible conditions faced by Haitian migrants upon return, ethical responsibilities of the United States government. Another main theme is the misuse of Title 42, where Title 42 is initially implemented to curb COVID-19 and is disproportionately used against migrants, especially people of color. The policy reflects a broader trend of criminalization of immigrants, communities, and neglects, neglects human rights and due process. Another main theme is political and social implications. The increased explosion, exclusions strain United States Haitian relations and draw criticism for human rights organizations. The policies undermine the United States committed to human rights and violate, interna violate international asylum norms. System, systemic, systemic racial and economic inequalities, uh, the vulnerability of Haitian migrants. Uh, another main theme is the call for reform. And the call for reform is advocacy for human immigration practices and policy reform. It also emphasizes on upholding human rights and international asylum standards. The analytical, the analytical and narrative is a com it combines statistical anal analysis with personal stories to highlight the human impact and general implications. The Asian refugees are the latest victims of Trump's deportation crackdown, an analysis of Michelle Chen's article. Intersection of the immigration In criminal justice, criminal convictions from years ago are leading to current deportations, creating lifelong consequences for individuals who have already paid their debts to society. This approach fails to acknowledge the personal growth and positive contribution these individuals have made, effectively punishing them perpetually for the, their past mistakes. Under the Trump administration, policies targeting immigrant communities, particularly those with past offenses, have intensified. These policies have exacerbated social upheaval and foster an environment of fear within these communities, 
further compounding the difficulty faced by refugees. These deportations also raise serious moral and ethical concerns. The U.S. has an historic, historical obligation to support refugees who were granted asylum after the Vietnam War. By disregarding these responsibilities, we were questioning our commitment to these communities who were once welcomed with open arms. Unjust deportation of Southeast Asian refugees. The core argument here is that the deporting refugees with past criminal convictions is fundamentally unjust, especially after they have served their sentences and integrated into U.S. society. Chen highlights the strong, long-standing ties these individuals have with their communities and their significant contributions since resettling in the U.S. Despite their efforts to rebuild their lives, they face deportation solely based on past offenses. The proposed solution is to reassess deportation policies to factor in rehabilitation and the meaningful connections these individuals have with their communities. Intersection of Immigration and Criminal Justice Chen also argues that the U.S. immigration system unfairly penalizes immigrations by conflating immigration enforcement with past criminal justice issues. Old convictions are being used to justify deportation, ignoring the time elapsed and the personal growth of individuals since those offenses. This approach is problematic and calls for a socialist call for a solution that separates immigration enforcement from criminal justice issues. Instead, policies should focus on current behavior and positive contributions immigrant makes to society. Criminalizations of Im immigrant communities. Trump immigration policies represent a broader term tr trend of criminalizing, um, criminalizing immigrants, particularly those from marginalized communities. Chen points out that these policies disproportionately target Southeast Asian refugees and other immigrant groups, exacerbating communities based on past offense. Instead, we should foster stability and promote integration, recognizing the positive roles immigrants play in our society. Historical context. Post-Vietnam War Refugee Resettlement After the Vietnam War, the U.S. granted asylum to many refugees in Vietnam, Cambodia, and Laos. The historical context is crucial as it explains why so many Southeast Asian refugees are in the U.S. today. The resettlement was not just a humanitarian effort, but also a response to the U.S. roles in the conflict, which created a more historical obligation to support these individuals. U.S. involvement in Southeast Asia. The U.S. played a significant role in the Vietnam War and related conflicts in Southeast Asia, leading to displacement of millions. Our involvement in these conflicts directly contributed to the refugee crisis. As a result, there is a profound moral responsibility for the U.S. to address the needs of those displaced by these actions and uphold the commitments made during the resettlement process. During the 1980s and the 1990s, U.S. immigration policy facilitated the resettlement of Southeast Asian refugees on humanitarian grounds. These laws reflected America's commitment to providing refuge and integrating these communities into the society. This era's policy shaped the refugee co communities and underscored the U.S. dedication to offering a, sa a safe ha haven. Southeast Asian refugees have significantly contributed to American society over the decades. They have built vibrant communities, enriched our culture, and made valuable con contributions in various fields. Their long-standing presence and positive impact make the current threats of deportation all the more unjust. U.S. launches mass expulsion of Haitian migrants from Texas. This was an analysis um, published by the Associated Press in 2021, and it was written by Juan A. Lozano. This examines how the U.S. government is handling the mass expulsion of migrants from Haiti and how to stop the flow of migrants. Some social context from this article was... I answered three questions. What is happening in society at this time? Why is this topic important? 
and which contemporary data, facts, or st statistics can provide more in-depth understanding of the issues in this essay. To answer what is happening in society at this time, during the 2020 coronavirus outbreak, the CDC, Center for Disease Control, informed the government that they are invoking Title 42 into place, which was also giving authority to border control to expel any migrant immigrants from entering the U.S. instead of letting them seek asylum as for how it had been before the pandemic. Why is this topic important? This topic is very important because during this time, many people have criticized this policy and claiming that this was put into place more to remove immigrants from the U.S. rather than using it for a public health strategy. It is very important to understand that these changes in policies is only making matters worse. COVID-19 is spreading much faster through our community transmission in the U.S. The public health authorities needed to focus more on mitigation measures that can work and Title 42 wasn't the answer, proving it was used for a completely different reason. Which contemporary data, facts, or statistics can provide more in-depth understanding of the issues in this essay? Since the Title 42 policy was put into place by the Trump administration, it has extended and got progressively worse for the migrants trying to seek asylum. It has played a huge toll on these asylum seekers, and they were deprived from their right under the domestic and international law to seek protection, but have faced more violence and dealt with death while returning back to their origin country. There have been over 8,700 cases of the seekers and migrants being kidnapped, raped, and attacked after being expelled from entering the U.S. and being relocated. Some findings that I focused on was deportation of foreigners and U.S. asylum law being in order with new expulsion policy, Title 42. For deportation of foreigners, I found that almost all heightened refugees trying to cross through Del Rio, Texas are being camped out and expelled from the U.S., resulting in many people that are wanting to come to the U.S. are hoping to create a better life and remove themselves from the dangers back home, but are not being, but are now being expelled and can't receive any type of protection from the U.S., resulting in a terrible toll of these migrants' lives, and they have to return to face violence and or death. For U.S. asylum law being in order with new expulsion policy, I found that with this policy being intact, lots of lives have changed and lots of controversy of whether or not this title is for the pandemic or for other reasons, resulting in there's lots of questions that have been asked whether or not we will ever get rid of Title 42. And while under Biden's presidency, they are barely getting rid of this policy and are now returning the Title 8, which gives migrants the opportunity to seek asylum, clearing most threats, and fear back at their home country. What did I like about this article? I really, I liked really understanding the struggles family had to go through while the pandemic was going on. Although it is very sad, it is very historical as well. I gained and learned lots of knowledge regarding this whole Title 14, Title 42 policy and how much it paid a huge change on these migrants and the U.S. people that completely disagree with this policy. It contributes new ideas for the future because our future presidents will be able to reflect on this historical time and look back and try to avoid these consequences if they are opposed of inhumane policies. To conclude this whole presentation up, I answered three questions. What are the key, key main points of this essay? And I believe the key main points of this essay was to get readers to know that these inhumane policies that were created and put into place by our former president, Donald Trump, only has changed lives significantly. For all the essays my group and I reviewed on, they all have similarities that Title 42 and the lack of diversity between the U.S. government and immigrants is a really big issue. The deportation laws will progressively get worse if we are under the hands of someone that believes truly in the deportation acts. What are my overall thoughts of the essay? As I sat back and laid in bed and learned absolutely nothing during the COVID-19 outbreak, it hurts my heart to find out that there were families ripped apart from each other, families struggled, and it was completely out of their control. I liked gaining the knowledge of Title 42 because before this, I only really knew a quarter of it. 
I gained lots of decency and I learned that many people that work for the government have to gain some moral reasoning. No one ever deserves to be denied a protection act and have to return back home scared for their lives. That is at home. We should provide a government at, that at least gives a little bit of hope towards these people and to let them know that our country is that we they can depend on us for safety. Some questions that I'm left with is if President Trump is elected back into office, is Title 42 going to be placed effective immediately? If so, should we fear for our family members that cannot get access for residency in the United States? Um, why do people in the U.S. believe that we don't need immigration? What benefits would they get if there wasn't a such thing called immigration? And some ideas that could have been expanded was this article could have gave me more of an insight of what happened next after all this. How are the families coping? What have they dealt with since the expulsion? And these are references for our presentation, and that concludes our presentation.